Boris Johnson versus Theresa May. Now it's war. If he gets her out of the way, he can run for Prime Minister of the country and deliver his version of Brexit, a Canada Plus style deal. If she gets him out of the way, she can keep checkers. But the two armies are at odds in the Tory party. He sees her as a Remainer. She sees him as a careerist. But who is really better? And I've made up my mind. The last thing I wanted uh, was to go against uh, David Cameron or the government. But after a great deal of, of heartache, I don't think there's anything else I can do. I will be advocating uh, vote leave. I've been told by someone in a position to know that you wrote two articles for the, for the Daily Telegraph because you knew you had to write, have an article in the Daily Telegraph on the Monday. One was for uh, staying in, the other was uh, for getting out. And the person who told me this said that the, the one for staying in was the more persuasive. Well, uh, on the contrary, the one, I don't know uh, what your conceivable uh, sources for that information may be, but I can tell you seriously that uh, I decided that it was much better for our country but, to but, but go they, out. This and Boris is my friend. I mean, I like him very much, but he's not an outer. Uh, and he told me he wasn't an outer, I mean, some time ago, and he told lots of other people he wasn't an outer. So I, I, I regret very much that he did it. This is a David and Goliath fight. This is a struggle of the little platoons against the big battalions. What comes first, World War Three or the global Brexit recession? <laughs> <laughs> and if we both leave and take back control, I believe that this Thursday can be our country's Independence Day. The Brexit vote itself can be blamed partly due to Boris. May, a Cameron loyalist and Remainer, was quite clear odds with the man from the beginning, while David was more vocal. Now let me say about Boris, I have huge respect for Boris as a politician, he's a great friend of mine, he is a fantastic Mayor of London, I think he's got a lot to give to the Conservative Party, I think he's got a lot to give to this country, but on this issue, I think he's got it wrong. And I think he's reached the wrong conclusion. So we're going to have, I hope, a very reasonable and civilised argument. <laughs> when David Cameron resigned, we all expected Boris to run. Well, just days ago, you were backing Boris Johnson, in fact, running his campaign. Why have you changed your mind? Well, I thought it was right that, following the decision that the British people took last week, that we should have someone leading the Conservative Party and leading the country who believed in their heart and soul that Britain was better off outside the European Union. And I hoped that Boris Johnson would be someone who could ensure that the government followed the instructions of the British people and also build and unite a team around him in order to lead this country forward. And Boris is an amazing and an impressive person. But I've realised in the last few days that Boris isn't capable of building that team. But it was the surprise leadership bid of Michael Gove who stabbed Boris in the back. Previously seen as an ally to Johnson's campaign, this slimy establishment mole is now the linchpin to May's government. What has Boris Johnson done? He's given a veneer of respectability to Nigel Farage's campaign. He has then created the most significant constitutional crisis that uh, I've ever seen in peacetime. He has seriously depleted the value of the nation's savings. He has torn the Tory party apart and he has left the administration of this country with no answers about the direction of economic travel. Boris gained the hate of many Tories, including Michael Heseltine, but did become foreign secretary in her government. In his time as foreign secretary, he made many vocal mistakes. Some, however, say this time he has gone too far. He promised a bright future for a Libyan city if it clears up its dead bodies first. And gain the resentment of many May loyalists. But you need to look at the numbers, although I fear the only number that Boris is in interested in Thank is the you. one that says number 10. But the fact is, he's the life and soul of the party, but he's not the man you want driving you home at the end of the evening. <laughs> <coughs> but it was Chequers, 
Theresa May's beloved Brexit plan that forced him to write a scathing letter about May's leadership and resign. Saying one thing to the EU about what we are doing and then saying another thing to the electorate. And given that in important ways, this is, in important ways, this is Bino or Brino or Brexit in name only. I'm of course unable to accept it, as I said, or to support it, as I said in the cabinet session at Chequers. And he continued writing columns for the media while still being an MP. He was attacking May, attacking Burkers, attacking Chequers. He was the outspoken one. She was the closed one. I really just re repeat what I say. I think people genuinely want to focus on the issues. I think, yes, of course, people are going to want to distract uh, into all sorts of sideshows. But the crucial thing is, what are the facts for the British public? What is really at stake? Brexit. How much... How... Oh, yeah, anyway, sorry. Okay. Should, we... Should we do that again? What I have said is that no deal would be better than a bad deal. Uh, you talk about a Canada-style deal. Actually, that's not on the table. It's not on the table for the United Kingdom. His plan is a Canada Plus style of Brexit. Her plan is Chequers. He has the support of all Brexiteer Tories. She has the support of the Loyalist. But most importantly, he's no longer in power. And she is. If Boris wants his version of Brexit, he has to get May out, or seriously weaken Chequers, even more before the end of the Brexit negotiations. But despite seeming incredibly weak, moments away from a vote of no confidence or a rejection of checkers by either the EU or Parliament, she's not budging anywhere. So right now, it's a stalemate. But do you agree with me? Join in the debate below and subscribe.